field and have to report that Jeff Toole had the highest score of the student athletes, although I'm not sure the 162 would get him into the Hall of Fame. So. No. All right, we'll go ahead and continue. Uh, Coach, we'll have you make an opening statement, and then we'll take questions from the group. I'm not a real big opening statement guy. I figure you guys will ask whatever you want to know to begin with, so well, let's start with that. And it would probably also help if we use the handheld microphones. So okay, then this, again, for those that had difficulty without the handheld mic, uh, not being into the opening statement, everybody's excited at Washington State about the season, so any questions? We'll go ahead and take questions. We've got it over here on the right in about the fifth row. Hi, Coach. Welcome to the Pac-12. Lisa Horn, Fox Sports. I oh, want to thank know, you. <laughs> I want to know how you feel about how some conferences have uh, eight games, conference games, and some have nine. Which Do you think it should be unilaterally the same amount of games? And Well, I'll just let you go on after that. Uh, probably, you know, I think that, uh, I think that, you know, I, I don't think that the dust has settled on realignment necessarily, uh, this business that everybody would have the exact same games, uh, right now isn't real likely when you consider how volatile the scene's been as far as teams changing conferences and things like that. I think that'd be ideal. I think, uh, either everybody should have a championship game or, or nobody should one of the two, you know, just. In other words, I think the more congruent you can make it, the better, especially if at the end you're declaring a champion. Down here, third row on the left. Oh, George Alfano, Desert News. Uh, like to ask Mr. Tool uh, how he's doing uh, in terms of health, because last year was pretty troubled, and I'd like to ask Coach Price uh, about what he's looking for as far as uh, from the quarterback position. Um, well, I'm 100% healthy. Um, feel great. Had a great off-season workouts and all that, and I'll hand it to Coach Price. On behalf of Coach Price. Um, <laughs> We're looking for our quarterback uh, really to, uh, well, we want him accurate. He's got to make good decisions, continue to develop his individual skills. But the single thing and most important thing that a quarterback does is, uh, is make the players around him better. I mean, he's a guy that uh, uh, he pulls the trigger and just, uh, you know, distributes the football. And the better he distributes the football, the better the overall offensive effort's going to be. And the ability, and it doesn't matter if you run the option or if you throw the ball, a quarterback that dis, uh, distributes the ball and makes a decision at that right point uh, on what to do when, those are the best ones. And then also I think uh, uh, some level of presence about them that are going to pull guys together and uh, accelerate uh, the, work, uh, the work ethic out there in, in the offseason and during practice on the field. And I think uh, uh, Jeff does a tremendous job of that. We'll stay on the left, fourth row on the end here. Sean Fitzy, California Golden Vlogs. Coach Leach, I heard that you went bear hunting with Mike Pulaski a few weeks ago, so you're already getting a good introduction of how Pullman is pretty different from Lubbock, Texas. Could you give us a little more on how the culture is different in Pullman compared to Lubbock and how this is going to change your recruiting philosophy and the way that you're going to run your program? Uh, Mike Pulaski, great guy. Uh, any of you that uh, get a chance to go bear hunting or go fishing with him really ought to. Uh, former Cal quarterback. Um, the, uh, as, you know, I don't think it changes as much as people might think. I mean, both, both places were places that had a unique special identity. I think you want to bring out the positive points of that. And, uh, and the thing that uh, Washington State has that's, that's uh, truly unique, there's a lot of a place out there talking about being college towns that really aren't in the truest sense of the word, and Washington State clearly is. Uh, you know, the exciting things uh, that I remember from college is, uh, is all, of my, all my experiences with uh, my fellow students, some positive, some negative, but exciting nevertheless, and I remember them to this day. And I think Pullman really allows you uh, to have that type of an educational opportunity. Uh, and then, of course, uh, with Bill Moose, our athletic director, we have a great vision as far as, uh, uh, you know, uh, growth. And he's got a, a proven body of work uh, 
you know, at Montana and Oregon and the other places he's worked where he's had a level of success. And so, you know, one thing in, in uh, nowadays uh, is just the direction of the university. And I think that's uh, uh, huge at Washington State. And, uh, and, and uh, one thing that is a little bit similar to Lubbock <coughs> is there's a lot of people that, you know, there's a lot of people that have been to Los Angeles, for example, so they have a visual, at least initially. Uh, there's a lot of people that hadn't been to Lubbock, Texas, and there's a lot of people that haven't been to Pullman, Washington. Uh, but once they once they get to Pullman, they love the place, and they and they see kind of the you know the the, the whole uh, electricity and atmosphere that exists there, and uh, that you have a specific uh, identity that's really special. And and so I think the key is getting them there. And then really, I tell everybody they need to um, come to Washington State for all the same reasons that I did. Far uh, back, last row. Sonny Kedwalader, 700 ESPN Spokane, Cap View, Tri-Cities, Yakima. Really, this question is for Travis and Jeff. In listening to some of the players with new coaches um, already earlier, I'm just wondering, did you feel that there needed to be any kind of a change to the football culture at Washington State from Paul Wolf era? And if so, what was that? Uh, you know, obviously, I think a lot of people felt that way just because of the numbers that we had been producing in, 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 you know, from the one and ten and then the four and eight seasons. Um, but, you know, Coach Wolf was doing a great job of recruiting. The program was at such a low uh, when he came in there and when I was a freshman, um, and he really started to turn the program around. And uh, I think Coach Leach would tip his cap to some of the recruiting he did. And, and uh, you know, what, these new, what this new coaching staff has done with this program is, is, I think, safe to say something that the old coaching staff would have never done. Um, the level of confidence that Coach Leach and the staff bring to this program and the level of excitement that they bring to this university is, uh, is tremendous. That sounded good. <laughs> Up in the theater seating, second row in the center. Uh, Coach Leach, I, I know that the, the fan base up there, Washington State, is uh, – you know, it's not a fan base exactly used to national championships and things like that. But it, but yet there seems to be a lot of hype built around this season. Are, are you feeling like you almost have to scale that back a little bit and say, hang on, give me a couple of years? Or what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think you just do the best you can. I worry about stuff from one day to the next. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I worry about developing our skills. I mean, you worry about what we can control. We can control our ability to improve. We can uh, control how hard we work. We can control how hard we focus. I worry about that. That's all I can really control. Uh, you know, expectations. I mean, and nobody really expects more out of us than we do out of ourselves, you know. And, and I think that uh, it, with coaches and players, uh, on an individual level, it's more meaningful to us to do the best we can and uh, manifest our efforts in the best fashion we possibly can than it is to anybody. And and so, you know, uh, uh, it, you know, if you if if you do well, well, everybody's excited. And I don't know that anybody it's possible for anybody to be any more excited than coaches and players. Uh, if somebody's disappointed about something, you know, or you might, you know, maybe there's some article or some fan thinks they're disappointed because something didn't work out right. Well, they're out of their mind if they think it's even remotely close to, to the disappointment that exists with a coach and, and a player. So understanding that, I pretty much ignore that and uh, worry about, uh, you know, uh, uh, me, and the, me doing the best I can as a coach and my players uh, doing the best they can as players. Question from the second row in the center. Michael Castillo, reignofchoy.com. This question's for Coach Leach. You've coached a lot of receivers like Wes Welker and Michael Crabtree. How would you compare a receiver like Marcus Wilson to those guys? Well, when you talk about Michael Crabtree and Wes Welker, they're, you know, they're a little further in their career and finished products. And I think a lot of times it's really easy to you know, remember their last uh, couple games uh, than um, – you know, you know, than 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 where they started. Uh, Marquise is explosive, uh, long arms. Really, he's got a lot of range. Can get to balls that you know you say, oh, there's no way that that's that ball's way overthrown, and he'll get to it. 
And then the other thing for a tall, angular guy, he likes going in traffic, you know, just sort of the whole, <clears throat> it reminds me, if you watch it on film, it looks like a pinball machine. This guy just working his way through the obstacles and stuff like that. So that's kind of fun. I, I think, um, uh, you know, the focus drive work ethic that both uh, uh, Michael Crabtree and Wes Welker had, uh, uh, Marquise is steadily, steadily developing and improving as we speak. And so... You know, I think that's exciting for all of us. Okay, in the third row on the left. Coach, you were at BYU um, as a student. Uh, what can you maybe impart to quarterbacks, both present and future, uh, from your experience and also from your experience at Texas Tech? Well, uh, offensively, we we drew a lot from uh, BYU, and I think um, you know the challenge in football is uh, is uh, packaging plays, not finding plays. Everybody's got good plays. I mean, if, if we passed around sheets of paper to this room, and there are certainly some exceptions in here, I'm sure, but if we passed around pieces of paper in this room and said everybody draw the best play you've ever seen or something that you think would be a, a great play. Um, I guarantee you there's some plays that are going to be good plays, indisputably. There's no question about that. Um, but the thing is, is uh, you know, as, as you select plays and stuff like that, package them up, how do you attack the whole field? And I think BYU is a very uh, good example for us. And, and you know, years ago, uh, really starting at Iowa Wesleyan, um, BYU was a huge influence on that. And then as far as... Uh, quarterbacks go uh you know a, 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 a team is something that's not just a quarterback i mean it's it's got a number of resources on it and the better you can do it at utilizing all, utilizing all those resources i think is really key and um uh well and then a lot of the thoughts and philosophies we borrowed from you know byu back when lavelle edwards was there and doug scoville and uh you know Everybody, Mike Holmgren, Norm Chow, all those people have passed through there. Second row, right in the center. A uh, question for Travis and Jeff, ShilohWinderFansided.com. I was just wondering if you could talk about what it's been like, uh, the, the transition from going from Coach Wolf to uh, learning to swing your sword with Coach Leach. Um, it was an easy transition. Um, coaches came in. Um, talk to us, kind of explain our, their philosophies and everything. And uh, I think all the players, we just kind of latched on to that um, just because uh, we want to be successful this year. And we know that uh, we need their help and uh, their support to get that. Yeah, I mean, just to add on to it, it was, it was real easy. He made it easy. Um, made it known that, listen, you're here to play football and that's it. And if you aren't committed to that, then, you know, you can leave. And he made an example of a few guys and really opened some people's eyes and say, Hey, this guy's not not playing around here. We need to really get our stuff together here and and, uh, and get with the program and and uh, you know it, it's 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 it was really easy to do. Right here in the center, about fourth row back. Rashawn Haylock, FoxSportsWest.com. Jeff, uh, what was it like when you kind of going through the offense for the first time? And uh, is it kind of like a dream, you know, being able to, to, to get ready to, to start this season with, with a wide open offense like you have now? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was actually surprisingly easy to kind of get a grasp on the offense. And um, it really learning the playbook isn't the hard part. It's, it's kind of learning what to do with the football and when in, in Coach Leach's eyes. And he obviously, um, you know, wants to, you want to get the ball out as, as quick as possible and do all those things. So, um, that's that's been my biggest learning curve and kind of building that relationship with my receivers as well and get on the same page with them. Um, but yeah, I mean it's obviously exciting. I know the history, the past the quarterbacks have had in his system. Um, but you know I'm not one to put too much pressure on it or thought in it. You know I'm not going into the season saying I'm going to throw for you know 5,000 yards or something because I you know, I got to do a lot of stuff in order for that to happen. I got I got a lot of work to do, and I got to get to know this offense better and continue to work for that to happen. So. Um, you know, I'm not, I don't put too much thought or, or, or pressure on myself about that. Far right, about the fifth row back on the end. Uh, Coach Leach, what 
uh, coach in the conference would make the best uh, hunting and fishing partner for you to go on a trip with? That's a good question. Let's think about that carefully because we don't want to we don't want to get this one wrong. <laughs> well, Rich Rodriguez has spent a certain amount of time in West Virginia, so we've got to recognize uh, some potential rub off there. I'm not as familiar with uh, 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 let's see. So let's see. We've got we'll have a bit of a playoff here. We got down to Rich. Okay, Kyle Whittingham's definitely right in the middle of this. There's no question about that. Uh, Colorado's a good location, but I'm not sure what his hunting skills are. I, I think I'm going to give the nod to Kyle. I mean, you're, he's sandwiched between a bunch of mountains, and he's familiar with those mountains and has been around them for a while. And I'm fairly uh, and certain that, that if uh, – and he's a tenacious guy and knows uh, Utah really well. So I think that uh, – uh, if you were to go hunting in Utah, I think Kyle would definitely be a key guy to have around. Back row in the center. Hi, Coach. Sarah Cazell, Pac-12 Digital. We're doing a, a fan question segment when we collect questions from Twitter and Facebook. So the Daniel Heiss from Twitter would like to know, which military leaders or generals would you compare Jeff and Travis to? Jeff and Travis. Let me think about this. Uh, I'm really more of a, a, a Civil War guy of the of the of the wars. If I were to select wars, uh, let me think here. Okay, so we got down to that. that uh, uh, you know, uh, I would have to say that I would have to say Jeff would be. A little more like uh, Stonewall Jackson, kind of all over the place, uh, attack from different angles. The cavalry's over here, nowhere here. You know, where he's not afraid to split the force and connect and attack a guy at all kinds of different angles. Uh, I would say that uh, Travis is a little more of a Ulysses S. Grant guy. You know, he's in the trenches. Uh, you know, if it requires bombarding... Uh, Vicksburg for a month. I mean, he's fully prepared to do it. You know, gets down in the stance, going to guard the river, uh, going to bombard them until they bust, uh, providing he keeps his pads low. <laughs> and we're going to focus on that, right? And then, um, uh, you know, just, uh, 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 of course, the, the bombardment will be shorter and they just bash, bash. But quieter guy, you know? Um, and then... Uh, and so, you know, just kind of steady, kind of quiet, steady, persistent. So I guess that's how I'd split it up. Question here on the left, third row on the end on the left. Hi, I'd like to ask Travis um, what you expect to improve um, the team defensively because it gave up a lot of points last year and also maybe what new schemes or what new influences or maybe something from General Grant might help uh, as far as getting a better defense this year. Uh, we want to enforce a lot of turnovers this year. Uh, we're going to be bringing pressure. Uh, we're going to be on the field a lot with this offense. But um, I think we worked really hard this spring at uh, forcing a lot of turnovers, and that's something that uh, will really obviously help our defense. Any additional questions? Over there on the right. Hi, Pete Stella, Fox Sports. Jeff, um, what's the biggest difference between you as a quarterback from a year ago as to right now, sitting up there? Um, you know, I would just say my confidence level uh, in myself, believe it or not. You know, after not playing as much last year, I still learned um, a lot, you just continuously, I'm the type of person, I, I feel like I can learn something from any given situation and things happen for a reason. So although last year I wasn't able to play, um, I still took a lot out of it. So I'm a more confident player, I'm a smarter player, um, and I really feel like I, I, I'm more prepared for this year, going into this year, and feel a lot more, like I said, confident going into this year. 
This uh, uh, question is for Coach Leach. Coach, uh, earlier today, uh, Todd Graham came in and he said when he immersed himself in film on the Pac-12, he said even he was surprised about how underrated the conference was. And I, I was thinking, wow, this is a guy who's in the sport right at the ground zero has those feelings too. I mean, in terms of perceptions of the of this conference and its prestige and strength, are those uh, interconference games the best way to make the case about how good the football is out here? Well, I, I don't. I've never really thought the Pac-12's got anything to prove. You know, I mean, because that whole argument is is ridiculously uh, self-serving. If you're an SEC person, you know, uh, they're they're going to beat the drum on the SEC. When I was in the Big Twelve, of course, uh, everybody thought the Big Twelve's the best conference. You know, Big Ten does the same thing. Um, uh, you know, the ACC does. They'll have a couple teams on top. And then, uh, well, the <laughs> the Big East would. But the, that, that argument didn't get quite the credibility until – and then, of course, they defected to the ACC. But um, I think the uh, – you know, I, I, just, I just think it's a, it's a whole hollow thing. I mean, where, wherever you're at, you feel like you're the best conference. You just go out and play, do your job, and if you win your conference – then they're going to tee it up, uh, uh, tee it up in either bowl games or they're going to uh, tee it up in uh, 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 the playoffs. You know, now we've got, of course, four teams will be in the playoffs. Um, and then that kind of reveals itself there, you know, to a point. Uh, um, now, a bowl game's a unique thing. I mean, there, you get a lot of cross-conference, but you get teams that have sat on the shelf for a month, month and a half. And, uh, and uh you know, college football is really the only sport where something of significance is played a month and a half away from uh, the regular season, which is, so I think that creates an artificial quality to it in some fashions that, you know, can manifest itself a variety of ways. But um, I, I, I don't care. I mean, if, if we're the Pac-12, I don't, I don't care what the other conferences think, you know. Um, I think exposure is always important so that if you have a good product that the fans can share in it and the fans can get excited about it. I think the Pac-12 uh, network will do that. But uh, quite frankly, there's not really any level that I care uh, what the other conferences think. And, and you, you, uh, I worry about the task at hand, which is being the best we can, playing the best we can against whoever the opponent is that week, you know. We'll take one more question up in the uh, theater seating, about six rows up in the center there. Hi, Coach Jessamyn McIntyre, 710 ESPN Seattle. You had an extremely successful graduation rate at Texas Tech. Uh, will you use some of the same tactics and instill the same thing here at Washington State? Well, there's no question about it. I think one of the most uh, – at Texas Tech, uh, for several years, we had the highest graduation rate of any public institution and any team in the top 25, and we took a lot of pride in that. And, and started from having one of the lowest ones. When I got there, we were on academic probation. And, but I think that, you know, academics is something you can compete in too. And you spend a lot of your time as a coach working with your players to be competitive people. And, uh, and then the other thing, the difference between being at a university for uh, four or five years and leaving uh, with a degree or without a degree, a degree is not that huge. You're there anyway. And I think with encouragement, I think with, uh, uh, you know, proper tutors, proper teaching, and occasionally proper pressure, uh, but a lot of it's just the conscientiousness of keeping track of it and making it something that uh, the group takes pride in, then I think graduation rates go up. And I also think that um, uh, once you get a class or two that believes that way, uh, it's when you get juniors and seniors that um, that believe in uh, in having a high graduation rate and GPA that all of a sudden it becomes a little more risky for freshmen and sophomores to miss classes, to miss tutor appointments and stuff like that because, you know, they want to be viewed well uh, as far as their older teammates go. And where that becomes part of the core and belief of the team, then I think uh, the efforts to accomplish that uh, help duplicate themselves. All right, that'll do it. Thank you, gentlemen.